All right, uh, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, which is the name of the Most High, and Yahweh Shai, which is the name of the only begotten Son. Um, I just wanted to uh, to do a video uh, on this. Uh, this is a comment here from my guy um, uh, Luke Matt, right, also known as Light in the Dark World. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, share a little, you know, story. I, I've told this once before. I'm not sure. The videos are still online, so, you know, hey, it's time to tell it again, because ironically enough, you know, this brother just sent this, uh, this comment the other day, so, uh, I wanted to do a response to it, and today is the 14th, okay, today, when the video is going to be released, is the 14th, okay, so this day, today, which is what, the 14th, is exactly three years, it marks three years exactly to the day, at uh, this event that I'm going to say happened, okay, it happened, um, February 14th, uh, 2018, okay, is when this story went down, okay, so, uh, before I do that, I'm going to read the comment, and excuse me if I take a, you know, a little breath between, um, my words, because it is, you know, cold out here, when I, you know, the area I'm at recording right now, anyway, I'm going to read it, it says, uh, light in this dark world it says my parents are slacking. Let me see. Can I? There we go. All right. It says light in this dark world. My parents want me in a mental institution for following the black Hebrew Israelites and evangelical Christians like warriors for Christ, which I know that channel he's talking about. But, um, you know, and I responded and said, I had the same thing happen to me. Stay strong, brother. Right. So, hey, look, Luke, Mac, my man, I hear you know, you're, you know, having difficulties in the household, man, okay, and I, I know, man, I know, I, I've been through it, you know, I've been through it myself, okay, I've, I've been down that path, okay, you know, so I know, man, okay, trust me, let me say this, I do my channel and all my stuff behind, you know, everyone I know, I do it behind their back, okay, because they, I, let me say this, man, my family found my channel before, and I'm going to get into that, okay, so this is, you know, a little testimony, a little story of how, you know, I was put in, in, in a mental hospital for this truth, man. Okay. And they look, man, the Lord's going to try us. Okay. We're all going to be tried in this thing. Okay. This isn't, you know, this isn't a cakewalk. Okay. You might remember back in school. I remember in middle school, we did that thing called a, you know, the cakewalk where basically, um, if you don't know what that is, it's, uh, you pay a couple dollars and you, uh, can go around to tables and taste different, um, you know, dishes, all right, usually dessert dishes from, you know, cultures around the world, okay, so this thing isn't, you no know, cakewalk, okay, this thing isn't, you know, going to be easy, man, okay, the scriptures say for many are the uh, afflictions of the righteous, okay, so, uh, you know, I'm going to get into the story, as I said, this exactly today marks one, I mean, three whole years when this event happened. Okay, just to get that, you know, put that out there. So here's the story. Um, three years ago, um, there was a massive school shooting on, um, I believe it was, what, February the 14th. Or as I said, exactly today, it was three years ago, the, the massive school shooting. And I did a couple videos on it. Okay, what I did was um, I did three videos. One video got 10,000 views in the first hour. The other video got 35,000 views in the first, you know, couple hours that I left it on. Because I left them on for like 12 hours. And then the other one got, you know, a couple thousand views on it. Okay. My channel probably got like what 600 subscribers from that, so I was like, I was one of those big guys now. Had about what seven 700 subscribers on my YouTube page, jumped from about you know from like 200 all the way to like 700. Okay, in just a handful of hours. Okay, so then what happens was I I go out you know to my corner, you know and teach there, and also I'm setting up, you know all the, you know the recorders, and everything you know, to, to teach, 
Okay, I'm setting up all my stuff, my recorder, where I put my Garmin on. And guess what happens? My mother ends up driving by. And keep in mind, I'm 15. Right? Keep in mind, when, in, when the story happened, I was 15 years old. Okay, keep, keep this in mind. Okay, when this happened, I was 15. So, you know, my mom drives by, you know, and sees me, you know, out there, you know, teaching. You know, she stops by and is like, oh, what are you doing? It was like, you know, uh, you know, I had, to, <laughs> you know, I had to think about something. You know, I had to, had to think about something because, you know, I never, you know, was seen as, you know, a quote unquote religious person or, you know, anyone that cared about the scriptures. And I mean, hell to, you know, the average person it looks like, you know, if my white garment, you know, might think I'm, you know, ISIS or something, you know, or, or some type of, you know, group like that. So, you know, I had to think quick. It's like, oh, you know, and then she's like, you have any weapons in that bag? It's like, uh, no, I don't got any weapons. All right. So long story short, she ends up, okay, well, we'll talk about it later then. Just want to make sure you're not doing anything. So I end up, you know, doing the lesson, right? I end up recording for as long as I'm able to. Then I, you know, I pack up my stuff and walk home and I think to myself, damn, man, you know, what, what situation did I get myself into now? All right. So anyway, I'm walking home and, uh, you know, it's it's doing okay then, and then it's okay. You know, there isn't, you know, any type of argument. But then what I found out happened, you know, I thought it was all said and done. But then in the middle of the night, I wake up, right, because I used to have, a you know, a backpack that I kept my uh, my gear and stuff in my garment, you know, my Bibles, my, uh, you know, my booklets, my, uh, you know, recording equipment. I used to put that at the edge of the bed, right? Nobody would look in there. So I wake up, you know, I put my phone on so I can watch some of, you know, Blasphemous HD, see what that guy's doing. And I notice, well, wait a second. My phone's gone. Right? I turned the phone on so I could watch some YouTube. It's like, or let me let me rephrase myself. I have two phones just to make that make that clear. So I put the one phone on so I could watch it. And then I go to look for my other phone. It's like, where the hell's my phone at? So but then I also look in the corner. And my bag's gone. It's like, what the hell's going on? So I go out to the living room. And uh, before I before I say this, I want to also make this clear. As we also at the time moved into a house with some of my mom's uh, longtime friends of probably like four years. They were, you know, school teachers, you know, that were, used to work with my mom. So we moved into, you know, with them and their family. So, you know, just to get that out of their way so everybody is clear. So my mom... And her friend are out there on the, you know, the patio. They're going for all my, you know, my writings, my, you know, my garment, my Bible, you know, trying to get onto my phone to see what I was recording. It's like, what the hell are you guys doing? So long story short, what ends up happening is uh, I end up going back to bed, you know, and they give my stuff back. But then the next day, you know, when my mom gets home from work. Uh, they end up taking me somewhere. So they didn't say where we're going. I believe they told me we we're going to, you know, a store because it was like seven o'clock at night. So I had to get a couple things. So I was, yeah, okay. So we end up going and they bring me to a, a mental institution. Okay. Now I also want to say this real quick. Earlier in the day, which was what? Valentine's Day. They, uh, somebody as a joke gave me a, a pair of, um, you know, new uh, underwears, right? New underwears. Just as a joke. And guess what the underwears were? They were hearts. So I was like, you know, I don't want to put that shit on. But you know what? All my other underwears were all worn out. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just put it on for the hell of it. Because, you know, they're brand new. Who doesn't like a new pair of damn, you know, socks and drawers? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I ended up putting that on. And, you know, I think we're going to the store. So, you know, I don't, I don't change them. I don't change them. So we end up... uh you know, going to, uh, you know, this place, which I found that was a mental institution when we got in. Um, and, you know, what ends up happening is they leave me there, you know, because they wanted to find out, you know, why, why am I out there? What the hell am I doing out there? Right. So they wanted me to talk to a psychologist and, you know, figure out what the problem was. Right. So, um, you know, what ends up happening is, uh, you know, they have to make sure you don't have any type of, you know, weapons or anything on you, 
you know, when you go into the facility. Okay, so uh, get this. I had to take my shirt and my pants off. I had to keep my, my underwear on. But guess what the underwear was? Right? The damn, uh, the damn hearts. So think about how humiliating that is for me, man. I had to strip down, you know, by the two, uh, you know, guys there that had to search you to make sure you didn't have anything on you. And I had damn heart underwear on. And again, as I said, I just put it on for a joke because somebody gave me them as a joke earlier, you know, in the day. I, I didn't expect this shit to happen. All right. So, you know, it's like, oh, man, you know, can it get any worse? So it ended up giving me a, um, what's it called? They end up giving me, I don't want to say the jumpsuit, but it's, you know, those, uh, if you've ever been to one of them, you know the suits I'm talking about, right? The blue uh, I guess we could say the, the gowns or whatnot that the nurses have. It's kind of similar to that, but a little bit different. If you've been to one before, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, I end up putting those on, and what do you know? The pants are somewhat see-through, so you can see my underwear through the pants. So it's like, oh, Christ, you know, what situation did I get myself into now? So, you know, I end up, uh, you know... Being with all the other guys there, you know, I, w I was there for about two days. All right. And as I said, you know, I'm trying to give as much detail as I can because, you know, there's, it's a lot of information, you know. So, so you know, bear with me I'm trying to make it all make sense, you know. Um, so anyway, you know, I end up talking with some guys, you know, like, yeah, you guys know about the Mark of the Beast? The guy's like, no, what is it? It's, you know, the microchip. So, hey, man, look, I actually taught some of the people in there. Right, they were actually Israelites, the guys I was talking with. Well, majority of them. I was, yeah, the one cracker in there, the one Edomite. Um, that guy was in there because he got into a fist fight at school. But anyway, you know, I ended up, you know, teaching guys about the truth, man, about the mark of the beast, you know, and some things about the scriptures. So anyway, what ends up happening is um, apparently why I'm in, you know, incarceration, right, being held against my will, at the facility, what ends up happening is, uh, you know, they end up finding my YouTube page. Okay, so they end up, you know, watching my videos and, you know, all the stuff, you know, that I have on there. All right, so, hey, look, man, you know, we're, we're all going to be tried in this thing, man. Okay, the scriptures say, if you're not tried and you're a bastard and not a son, that's what the scriptures say. The Lord tries those who are his sons. Right, so hey man, I, I took it cheerfully. I was like, oh, well, the Lord did this. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, put me into this situation to try me. Okay, so long story short, what ends up happening, I end up getting out. But then, you know, problems begin, right? Because now they all know, right, the stuff, you know, I, I see, you know, deaf to America, deaf to white people, you know, you know, that an old man can sleep with, you know, so called teens. You know, all, all all that kind of stuff. They end up seeing all that. So it's like, imagine imagine what I had to go through, man. Had to live for a handful of months, you know, in the house, you know, with, uh, you know, with those people, which they eventually moved away because, you know, everybody, you know, pretty much turned, uh, say, turned against each other, if that makes sense. Okay, matter of fact, that even goes back to the scriptures, man. The scriptures that speak about, uh, you know, there should be, I believe it's, but five in a house, uh, three against two and two against three, nearly paraphrasing the scripture. But that really happened, man. The house was divided. Okay, the house was divi divided. Okay, majority of people there were against me, but I still kept my integrity. You know what? I still, I still kept doing videos, man. I still kept going out. Even though, you know, the, 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 my mom's friends wanted me to go back there permanently. Okay, go back to, you know, the mental asylum permanently. Okay, because they thought I had, you know, a whole lot of problems, man. Okay, so, you know, I, I still remained faithful, man. I, I still kept going out, right? I still kept going to the highways and byways. I still kept making videos in the same house, you know, they were all living in. Okay, so I still remained faithful and, and done all those things, man. Even though, quite literally, everyone was against me, man. But you know what? I still remained faithful to the ministry, man. Okay, I didn't bug out. 
and say, oh, you know what? You know, my parents told me not to do it, so I'm not going to do it. No, I didn't do that because for one, I was a man, right? Because a boy becomes a man at 12 years old. So, hey, I had I had a duty to, you know, do the work, man. What did Yahushai tell his parents and Luke, the second chapter, right? That I have come to do my father's business, right? When they, when they question him on, you know, the, the, his teachings, okay? So, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, that's just the story, man. That's the story of how I was persecuted exactly three years ago today, man. Okay, today, three years ago, this all went down. Okay, today, what, the 14th, tomorrow, the 15th, and the 16th, and then I got out on the 18th, and then that's where the rest of the story happened. Okay, say, so, hey, look, man, you know, you brothers out there are going through things, man. You're not alone, man. Okay, you're not alone. Okay, we've been through, you know, some of us, you know, brothers have been in the truth, you know, a little longer. You know, we've been through stuff, man. I know the Apostles of Great Millstone, which much respect to the elders of Great Millstone. You know, they've, they've been uh, incarcerated before in prison for this ministry. Okay, so, hey, man, you know, the Lord is really going to try us, man. Okay, so, you know, you got you to gotta remain faithful, man. All right, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, so I just wanted to, you know, share that little testimony real quick. Because, hey, look, man, I, I was actually locked up against my will for this ministry, man. Right, my, my family found my YouTube page. All right. They saw what I was teaching. And I got persecuted by my own household, man. All right. And, and, you know, they wanted me, you know, to be locked up permanently. Okay. But, you know, the Lord helped me find a way to, to get out of it. And they also want to mention this. As I said, I kept going out, um, you know, when my parents told me not to. Right. If I go out again, then there's going to be consequences. Okay. Um. But you know what? I still kept going out. And let me tell this one time, man. One time, you know, my father went to work, right? Which I didn't expect him to go home till like six at night. So I get my stuff ready to go. I have my big, you know, sign on my backpack and all that good stuff. So what I do is I, you know, I bring it to the master bedroom, which the house was laid out like this. The master bedroom, you know, you had a sliding glass door. The, uh, the back pool area. Then across there you could walk. And there's a screen door there you can go out. That's the back door. So I went out the back door. And um, I left my stuff in the room. Just so I can check. Alright is uh, is my mom's friends home. Or did they leave? All right, did they go somewhere? So guess what? I put all my stuff in the, the master bedroom. So I could walk out and see what's happening. And guess what happens? I meet my father there. My father was coming home from work early that day. All right. So I quickly went back to the room and took my stuff and went back in the room and nothing happened. But just hey, listen, man, imagine, imagine that my father would have caught me sneaking out again to go teach. But guess what? The Lord delivered me, man. Something was on me. Something was in my mind saying, you know what? Let's put this stuff down and just go see if someone's home first. And I was delivered. All right. I was delivered from, you know, what would have been another tough situation. OK, so, hey, man, you know. That's just my testimony of how, you know, of the time that I was persecuted from my own family for this ministry, man. Okay, you know, not to sound prideful or anything, because, you know, we all have to be humble, man. Okay, because these things will happen to every single one of us in this ministry. But, you know, hey, man, you know, I can boldly say that, you know, I, I still kept going, man. I still kept, you know, teaching this ministry. And I will keep teaching this ministry. All right, I will continue in this. All right, I will continue. Okay, and guess what? To this day, I still do it behind my parents' back, which I'm an adult, which I was back then, of course, because an adult is a person who's hit puberty. Um, as I, you know, used the example of Yahweh Shai when he was 12 years old. But, you know, I still today, you know, do this behind my parents' back. So that's why, you know, guys ask me, oh, why can't you, you know, do a live stream now? Or why can't you record with me right now? All right. Well, hey, look, man, it's not like I can, you know, sit on my couch and record at any given moment like some of you guys can, right? I got to strategically, you know, plan things out, okay, to the best of my ability, all right? So, you know, I hope that was edifying. Uh, anybody that uh, made it this far into the video, I want you to put hashtag, put hashtag 100 
in the comment section down below just to see if anybody made it this far into the video. Um, but anyway, I hope there was a edifying video and I'm going to say shalom.